grapes, grapes, and grapes once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm back with fruit of the day, the one and only grape. So maybe you love them, maybe you hate them. Maybe you like them in the form of wine. Maybe you prefer them as a fruit, or maybe, just maybe, you really enjoy raisins. Well, whatever the case may be, grape, wine, or raisin, <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Please listen on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of grapes. All right. First up, just a little bit of background information. Grapes grow on a vine called a grapevine. <laughs> That's right. Believe it or not. Also, grapes are considered a part of the berry family. You can find some grapes with edible seeds while others are seedless. That's right. Also, grapes are used to make wine, raisins, and grapeseed oil, among other grape products. And last but not least, there are actually three types of grapes. Right, we have table grapes, as you can see here in the picture. We also have wine grapes, which of course are used to make wine. And lastly, we have raisin grapes, which, as the name implies, are used to make raisins. So there we have it, guys. A few little tidbits covering the background information of grapes. All right, now it's time for a few fun facts. White grapes may be a term that you're familiar with, but they're actually green in color. That's right. So whenever anyone says, hey, let's have some white grapes, really they mean green grapes. Also, many think that if a grape is seedless, it has been genetically modified. Of course, GMO grapes should be avoided, but seedless does not mean they've been genetically engineered. Some seedless varieties of grapes are the result of natural mutations, and these variations can be vegetatively propagated to allow for commercial production. Other grape varieties produce seedless fruit if pollination is withheld, while some can be produced by cross beating or grafting. So there we have it, guys. I always thought personally that seedless grapes were GMOs, but as we now know, it is not always the case. So if you are afraid of seedless grapes, please don't be, okay? It's all part of mother nature, right? So go ahead, eat the grapes, whether they have seeds or not. All right, now it's time for a few not so fun facts. Here we go. Grapes may pack a big punch with pesticides from the conventional growers. The 2014 edition of the Shopper's Guide to Pesticides by the Environmental Working Group has once again identified co conventionally grown grapes as one of the most problematic fruits and vegetables in terms of pesticide residues. By purchasing certified organic grapes, you can avoid the damaging intake of pesticides. So in a nutshell, this is what <clears throat> they're saying, is that most grapes that you find in your local grocery store probably have pesticide residue. So if anything, when you take them home and before you eat them, wash them. However, if you want to avoid the pesticides, right, then you probably want to go with certified organic grapes, right? So there we have it. We now know the difference between which, which grapes are good and which grapes are not so good. So there we have it, guys. A few not so fun facts about grapes. Okay, it's now time for us to dive into the 520 rule. That's right, guys. The 520 rule is all about food labels. Basically, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, specifically, when we talk about the 520 rule, we have, we have to talk about percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, let's take a look at our diagram. Notice that some parts of the diagram are highlighted in purple, some are highlighted in yellow, and then we have some nutrients that are highlighted in light blue. Let's go over each part individually. 
First up is the percent daily value column. Notice that percent DV is represented as a percentage. As you can clearly see, there is a scale, there's a range, there's a high end and then there's a low end, right? Now, let's talk about the yellow part. The yellow part highlights specific nutrients such as total fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. Now, the reason why these nutrients are highlighted in yellow is because they do a really good job at promoting disease within the body temple, unfortunately. Next up, we have the nutrients that are highlighted in blue, such as dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, which basically represent all vitamins and minerals. Now, these nutrients are different from the yellow nutrients. Why? Because rather than promote disease, they actually promote health and wellness within the human body. So here's basically what we want to focus on is that when it comes to the nutrients that are highlighted in yellow, we definitely want to make sure that those percentages are at the lower end of the scale, whereas the nutrients that are highlighted in light blue, well, because they promote health and wellness within the human body, we want to make sure that they are at the higher end of the scale, right? So rather than use the words higher, lower, let's be even more specific, shall we? If a food item offers anywhere from 0% DV to 9% DV, then technically that food item is not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food item offers 10% DV to 19% DV for any particular nutrient, then that food item is a good source of that nutrient. Lastly, if the food item offers 20% DV or greater, then the food item is said to be an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. Okay, now that we're aware of the 520 rule, let's now dive into the nutrition facts. Now for today's lecture, a single serving of grapes is equal to one cup of grapes. Sounds good to me. So here's what happens when we consume one single serving of grapes, meaning one cup. You're only going to get about 104 calories, 27.3 grams of carbs, 1.1 grams of protein, 0.2 grams of fat, 1.4 grams of fiber. Now, vitamin K comes in at 28% DV. So according to the 520 rule, grapes are an excellent source of vitamin K. Next up is vitamin C coming in at 27% DV. According to the 520 rule, a single serving of grapes is an excellent source of vitamin C. Then we have copper coming in at 10% DV. Now, based on the 520 rule, 10% is between 10% and 19%. So yes, a single cup of grapes is a good source of copper. Next up is potassium only coming in at 8% DV, so unfortunately, it's not a good source of potassium. Then we have thiamine, which comes in at 7% DV, not a good source. Riboflavin coming in at 6% DV, not a good source. Then we have vitamin B6, also 6% DV, not a good source. And lastly is manganese, coming in at only 5% DV, not a good source. Well, if you are looking to perhaps get more potassium, more thiamine, more riboflavin, vitamin B6, and manganese in your diet, all you have to do is eat more grapes. Because remember, these percent DVs are based on a single serving. So if you want more, simply have another cup. Very simple. We can turn those not so good sources into good, if not excellent sources. So there we have it, guys. The nutrition facts about grapes. All right, now it's time to talk about the health benefits. Now, before we dive into the health benefits, Coach D wants to drop a few wisdom dimes on you. Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to introduce to you one of the seven hermetic principles. It's called the principle of cause and effect. And basically, it states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. So what does that all mean? It simply means this. 
that if you want to become healthy, you have to cause it. If you want to become diseased, well, believe it or not, you have to cause that too. So because this lecture is based on becoming healthy and becoming well, let's notice something that ultimately the health benefits are the effects, whereas the nutrients are the causes. That's right. So if you want to become healthy, you have to cause it by putting in the right types of foods, or shall I say more specifically, the right nutrients. So what I want to do now is go over a few of the health benefits and ultimately what causes those health benefits to materialize. First up, believe it or not, grapes have antimicrobial benefits. Now, the question is, what causes those benefits? It's easy. It's a few phytonutrients. First up is quercetin, then we have pisietinol, and lastly we have resveratrol. Next up, grapes cause better brain function. That's right. So which phytonutrient is responsible for that? Well, say hello to anthocyanins. Also, grapes may prevent colon cancer. Believe it or not, it's the fiber that causes that to happen. Also, grapes help keep your cardiovascular system in good shape. Also, grapes have anti-inflammatory actions. Now, which phytonutrients are responsible for that? Well, say hello to polyphenols, flavonoids, and proanthocyanidins. That's right, long word. Next up, did you know that grapes are loaded with antioxidants? Now, for, for those of us who don't know anything about antioxidants, those are chemicals, specifically phytochemicals, that enter the body, and when they enter your body, they help to deactivate free radicals. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that it can help reduce cancer, or shall I say the likelihood of cancer uh, growing inside the human body. It also helps to reduce the aging process. Oh, and by the way, it also helps to reduce the likelihood of you developing good old heart disease. So now the question is, which antioxidants do grapes have? It's easy. Say hello to flavonoids, vitamin C, and good old beta carotene. Next up, grapes may help reduce obesity and type 2 diabetes. So the question is, which phytonutrients do that? It's easy, polyphenols. And last but not least, grapes promote longevity. Right, who doesn't want to live longer? So, which phytonutrient is responsible for that? Well, say hello to resveratrol. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's something that you have to understand, is that one of the reasons why plant foods are amazing for the human body is because they provide all of these amazing phytonutrients, which ultimately come from plants. The reason why animal products meat and processed foods are not good for the body is because they load the body with toxins, not phytonutrients. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, a few health benefits of grapes. All right, now it's time to talk about food, specifically plant food. <laughs> Guys, say hello to ForksOverKnives.com. Now, there is a movie attached to the website. It's entitled Forks Over Knives. I highly recommend that you check it out. Now, as usual, I went to the website, ForksOverKnives.com, did just a little bit of research on grapes, and look at what I found. Two amazing vegan grape recipes that I want to share with you right now. Now, the first one is entitled Baby Kale Salad with Farro, Grapes, and Oranges. Take a look at the picture. Looks amazing. Our second vegan grape recipe is entitled green apple slaw looks amazing take a look at that picture right now if your tongue well if your mouth is watering <laughs> and you're interested in making these dishes it's easy all you have to do is click on the description box i'm providing you a link to each recipe that's right now here's the cool part is that if you decide to go you're going to find a ton of information such as an ingredient list, cooking time, and the instructions as to how to make each dish. So do me a favor, click on the link, make it, taste it, come back to the video and let us know exactly how it tastes. Please share your thoughts. 
So now we have it, guys. Not one, but two amazingly delicious vegan grape recipes for you from ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, thanks for the fun facts. Coach D, I really enjoyed the not so fun facts and I even like and am very interested in making the two vegan grape recipes. But what I really want to know is when should I eat more grapes? Well, guys, if that's your question, then the perfect day and I do mean the perfect day to eat more grapes is Nature Day. What? Nature Day. Yes, Nature Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, maybe you know nothing about the challenge. Well, here it is. In a nutshell, the 23% challenge is basically a monthly seven day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships. Oh, and by the way, it also helps to preserve good old planet Earth. Now, here's the interesting part about the challenge is that it's seven days long. As a matter of fact, it's the first seven days of every single month. The first all the way through the seventh, right? Now, because Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every single month. So whether it's March 1st, April 1st, or even June 1st, it's always Nature Day. Now the question is, what in the world is Nature Day really all about? Right, Coach D, I really wanna know. Well, guys, Nature Day is all about getting closer to nature. Now, yes, there are lots of different ways in which you can get closer to nature. You can go take a nature walk in the wilderness. You can go to the ocean and take a swim. Why not skinny dip? <laughs> or maybe you can go to a pet store and pet a few pets. Why not? But for the sake of Nature Day, Nature Day, as I stated, is all about getting closer to nature. So then how do I propose we get closer to nature? It's easy. Eat it. That's right, guys. It's time to eat more plants. Now, if that appeals to you and maybe you're the type of person who is trying to lose a little bit of weight, maybe you're trying, trying to take off a few pounds or maybe you've been stricken with diabetes or heart disease or cancer or obesity and you're looking to for a remedy right well i've come up with a few ways that can help you implement more plants into your diet right or maybe you're the type of person who is considering transitioning to a more whole food plant-based diet well if that's you listen up First, I want to introduce you to a 3% vegan. Now, a 3% vegan is anyone, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Secondly is a 13% vegan. A 13% vegan is any man, woman, or child who only eats plant foods and only drinks water only four days out of an entire month. Now, there are two ways in which you can go about this. It could be the first four days of the month or providing the month has four weeks, you could choose one day per week. Lastly is a 23% vegan. Now a 23% vegan is any man, woman or child who only eats plant foods and drinks only water the first seven days out of the month. That's right guys, that's what Coach D is, a 23% vegan. So now the question is, what types of plant foods do you eat, Coach D? Well, it's very simple. I only eat foods that come from the five food groups of plant foods. Now, that happens to be all fruits, all vegetables and herbs, all legumes, meaning beans and peas, all nuts and seeds, and lastly, all whole grains. And once again, I only drink water as my beverage. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about Nature Day. All right, now, because I want you to be successful in your quest to eat more plants, I'm gonna offer you a few tips, right? So here we go. Tip number one, go to your local grocery store. 
Now, when you get there, you're going to go to two places. Number one is the produce section. Why? Because that's where all of the fresh plant foods are located. And number two, go to the freezer aisle. Why? Because that's where all of the frozen plant foods are located. Now, some of us may be a little doubtful about frozen plant foods. Well, to ease your concerns, believe it or not, the nutrition content of frozen plant foods is very comparable to that of fresh plant foods. Next tip is to go visit a local farmer's market. Now, if you don't know where one is, do a quick Google search, type in farmer's markets near me, and within less than half of a second, Google will give you your desired results. Now, believe it or not, there are a few advantages to shopping at a farmer's market over a grocery store. Advantage number one, Farmers markets only cater to organic produce, or shall we say organic plant foods, right? So what does that mean? Fewer herbicides, fewer pesticides, fewer chemicals. Also, because the food is grown locally, well, that simply means less transportation time. So now that savings is passed on to you, the end consumer. Tip number three, go visit the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So after you finish with the produce section and the freezer aisle, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, depending on the name of the store, they may call it the kitchen. Whether it's the kitchen or the prepared dishes section, just walk on over there. Ask the person behind the counter if they have any vegan options, not vegetarian, but vegan options. Excuse me. Now, providing they do, ask for a quick sample and providing you like it then purchase it by the pound or maybe even two pounds if you really 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 like it and my last tip is to go eat at a vegan restaurant ladies and gentlemen it's time for us to support the vegan community right so let's eat at a vegan restaurant now maybe you're the type of person who doesn't even know that vegan restaurants exist well if that's you Go back to Google, type in vegan restaurants near me, and within less than half of a second, Google will give you your desired results. Now, there are some advantages to going to a vegan restaurant, especially if you're the type of person who doesn't like to cook, maybe you don't have time to cook, or maybe you just don't know how to cook plants, right? Well, like one of my best friends told me, a shoemaker to his shoes. So what does that mean? It simply means that vegan restaurants hire vegan chefs who know exactly how to cook plant foods and they also know which plant foods to combine to give us the most nutritious, delicious dishes. So there we have it, guys. Not one, not two, not three, but four amazing tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day. And this one comes from yours truly and the rest of the 23% nation. We have inquiry minds. So we want to know, there are three types of grapes. What are they? <laughs> Very simple question. I believe I covered it earlier in the video. So please click on the, on the comment box and write your answer there. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share the video, especially if you love grapes. Now, let's not forget our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out. Take care. God bless. And never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.